Hello everyone, I'm Devashish Khare and today we are going to be solving the problem of the day. Uh, well, the problem is non-repeating numbers. Let's read it. Given an array A containing 2 to the power n plus 2 positive numbers, out of which 2 to the power n number exist in pair, whereas the other two numbers occur exactly once and are distinct. Find the other two numbers and return in increasing order. Okay, so we do have these examples here. Let's read the examples carefully and try to understand what the question is asking for. Here are the examples. So taking the first case where we are given n to v2 so that uh, from this we can predict what is going to be the size of our array. It will be 2 to the power n plus 2. And when the value of n is 2 that means we are talking about 4 plus 2, 6, right? So we are going to be getting array of six length. It will be having six element and we have to give out those two elements which are not repeating. Okay. So again, seeing here, we have one, two, three, two, one and four. If we have to see one, one does have a pair, this one. So we don't have to return one. If we go to two, two also has one more two. So it has one pair. We don't have to return two. If we look at three, three is occurring only once. And same goes with 4. 4 is also occurring only once. So these two are the values that we have to return. And we have to keep in mind that we are returning them in increasing order. Thus, this is our output. Looking at the second example here. We have n to be 1. So again, the same formula. Here, this time, we have 4 values. Fine. We have 2, 1, 3, 2. In which if we have to check again this 2 is having this 2 to make pair with so this is not going to be included coming to this one this one is distinct and does not have any pair so this is going to be including included in the answer and same goes with this 3 1 and 3 are the distinct values and we have to return them as the answer okay so we are very clear with the question what it is asking for now Let's work a little on the intuition. So very useful way of doing this is by using Zor. We do have more ways to do uh, the same question, but Zor, or we can say bitwise in general, is way more faster. So what are we actually going to do with Zor? Let's talk about the properties of Zor first. If we want to take out Zor of two numbers, so it goes like this, whenever you have same numbers it is actually zero and whenever you have different number it has one we are talking the terms of zero and one only but if we perform it in different numbers assume we have seven and three so seven we have it as one one and one and for three we have it as one this right so if we perform zor this is the symbol of zor in programming languages so when we perform ZOR of these two numbers, we have to check that if the values are both set or we can say if both the values are 1. So as you can say, similar values means 0, right? So 1, 1 is 0, 1, 1 is 0 and 1, 0 here is 1 because once the values are different, the value goes to be 1, correct? So this is how we figure out ZOR of two numbers. Now, how can we use ZOR to our benefit? in this question so whenever we are talking about same numbers okay so one property of zor is zor of any two same number is always going to be zero so if we are doing two zor two it is always going to be zero how let's check so if we have to represent two it will be like this correct this is the first uh, this is the first two this is the second two if we perform zor see all the bits are going to be same and what do we mean by same bits if we are doing ZOR? Same bits means zero. So eventually all the bits will become as zero. Okay, so this is a very useful way in which we can find out that two values are common. Fine. Now how it is going to help us in our question? Let's talk about the approach now. What our question asks for is we have to figure out the distinct values. Fine. One more thing I would want to tell you is the property of associativity. So if you are doing one SOR2, SOR3, 
it can be written as 1 swar with zor of 2 and 3 and the same thing is equals to 1 swar 2 swar 3 now once we know that this follows associativity we can do one thing right if we figure out swar of all of these values what would we be having we'll have something like 1 swar 2 swar 3 swar 2 swar 1 and swar 4 right now as you can see these both 1 will combine up and become 0 because we have seen just with the example of 2 that same values have zor to be 0 this will make up a pair and this will end up as 0 okay now one more thing anything zor with 0 is itself so if we assume we just cancel once we are left with this right now same goes with 2 we'll be having 0 zor 0 zor 3 zor 4 right this means nothing and only the answer that we'd be left with is 3 or 4 but we are not going to be getting it in this form this is how we are solving it what we'll be receiving it is the combined value of these two what is going to be the combined value of these two let's solve it well 3 is 0 1 1 and our 4 is 1 0 0 so when we find out zor of it we can see 1 0 different values that means 1 different values 1 different values 1 so this is the zor of 3 or 4 okay fine so once we know the zor of these two values our task is to figure out the two distinct value out of this zor now how we are going to do this for that we have to figure out what is the last bit that is set inside our combined zor so for 3 or 4 we need to find out what is our last set bit how we are going to find it we already know the answer and we know that this uh, last bit is set but if we have to do it in a more programmatic way how can we do that well first thing could be we can make up a mask like this and uh, let's take a random value not this let's take 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 this to be a random value and uh, we have to figure out which is the first bit that is set so one thing that you can do is you can create a mask like this with least significant bit to be 1 and then you can perform AND right and once this thing is 0 that means the first number does not have this position to be set right similarly once this is unsuccessful we will change our mask we will shift our 1 and it will look like this and then again we have to do the same thing if the answer is 0 that means this bit is also not set again we will change up our mask and I am changing up a mask by doing the right shift ok so once we are here you can see this value is going to be 1 and uh, focus here we are performing AND ok so I hope you are very clear with AND 1 AND 1 is 1 1 AND 0 is 0 0 AND 1 is 0 AND 0 AND 0 is 0 ok so when we are having 1 and 1 that means our value is 1 so once we get this that means we now have our first set bit this is our first set bit or you can say this number or this uh, binary number is having the bit which is signifying that this position is the first set bit of this binary number fine once we have found this bit out okay once we have found this bit out now how can we make use of it see now let's get back to our previous example our previous example threes or four now threes or four is actually seven we have seen that and it is represented as one 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 so if we have to find out a value uh, so that we know that which is the last set bit from the same approach we can find it like this right also one more thing there is even a smarter way of finding it and how we can do it is assume we have value we can perform and with its two's complement okay so assume you have this seven inside this value 
what you have to do is you have to perform seven and negative seven and by negative seven i mean two's complement of seven and this will give you this number this will give you zero zero one how let's see you have one one and one right and you have to figure out the two's complement what is two's complement firstly you have to invert it so when we invert one 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 it becomes zero 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 and then we have to plus one to it right so this is how we are going to end up at 001 and you can see 001 is actually telling that this position is actually the first set bit of the value or we can say 7. Now we have smartly found out this value. Now what we are going to do with it. See we are going to make use of this value and we are going to divide all of these numbers into two fragments. Uh, the first fragment will have all the numbers which have this bit as set and the other fragment which has all these numbers as unset okay so why we are doing that because when we are having three or four see very carefully when we are having three or four what we are actually doing is we are doing zero one one and one zero zero right and when we are performing the last set bit it is coming to be this right so we are actually checking this bit of every number and we are categorizing which of all these numbers are having 1 at this position and which of all these numbers are having 0 at this position. All of these numbers having 1 at this particular position will have their pairs and will get cancelled out. All of this having this 0 here at this position will be the common pairs will be cancelled out. We will be eventually left with 3, sor 4. And if we are bifurcating it in two, one will be containing three, another will be containing four. Because the property of ZOR is, again, remember, the property of ZOR is when the values are different, only then the value, uh, you can say the answer is going to be one. Correct? So if we are having the last bit of the ZOR value to be one, that means that at this position in three and four, either three or four are going to be one or zero fine these are going to be different so once we are clear with it what we are actually going to do is we'll take this zero zero one we will and it with the first value okay when we and it with the first value you can see that this bit is set so this is going to go on here correct in the first fragment so we are going to put one here once we go to two you can see that this bit is not set we are going to put 2 in this fragment and then we move up to 3 this bit is set 3 will be here we again go to 2 this bit is not set this will go to in this other fragment and you can see once you have separated 2 in other fragment you have it in common and simultaneously while we are separating the fragments we can keep on performing ZOR so that whenever we have two values to be similar we can cancel them and it becomes zero so here we have one we have three in this fragment because we are constantly also uh, putting zor in between the values these values are going to be zero here we get one this bit is set what we'll do we'll put this in this fragment and these ones will be becoming zero then and then we eventually we have four once we know that this bit is not set this will go upon this fragment and this will become our whole complete two fragments in which we have three and four as separate values which are distinct so this is how it is working let's quickly see the code for the same so this is python code for the same uh, that we have just seen let me simply dry run it for you guys we are just putting a simple you can say a variable which will be storing the sort of all the values i am traversing it and finding out ZOR of all the values. So if we were having 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, I am going to traverse from here till the end and I'm performing 1, ZOR 2, ZOR 3 up till the end. Eventually in my ZOR, I'll be having uh, 3, ZOR 4, which is 7, right? Now I have created this variable which will be storing my binary number, which will give me the first set bit, thus FB. So what I'm doing here is I am doing the two's complement we see how we have already seen how i'm doing and of it with sor this value so it will be seven and negative seven fine so this will 
land us here in this binary number once we have this what we are doing it what we are doing is we have combined we have taken two different variables initially we are uh, initializing them with zero then what we are doing i'm again just traversing my array i'm seeing if my number upon doing and with this fd variable if that is zero that means the last bit is not set and if that is not the other condition is going to be that it is set so constantly what i'm doing i am putting these variables inside a let's uh, dry run with the binary values so once we have our ith let's say one so we have zero zero one we are doing and with zero zero one again what we are getting we are getting one here that means the last bit is set we are going to go here in if and inside a variable a what will i do a is having zero so it will be a zero zor one this time and it will be it will be stored inside a then again when we do it we do it with two two has it to be zero so the answer is going to be zero thus we will be going into else part in else part what we are having we are having b zor i again initially b is also having zero as the value zero zor two is going to be the next what we were saying as fragment here okay so once that is done uh, again we'll end up at three three is having the bit to be set it will be going here zero sort one sort three fine and again coming to the next value two it will be going here zero sort two sort two once we go to this four uh, we will see that this bit is not set it will end up here i forgot one one so if we also have that one it will go in this array uh, in this collection you can say so once we have done that what we are having eventually is this equation and this equation which is actually getting solved simultaneously eventually we'll be having one one cancelled two two cancelled three and four as the remaining value in our a and b so once this is done we have to put this value in ascending order we are going to do it like this here and we'll be returning it all right now talking a little about complexity because we did not do anything much we were just traversing the array so the time complexity is actually going to be linear and i have written o n here where n actually is 2 to the power capital n plus 2 as per the question okay so let's uh, run this code so here is the same code that we have seen let's compile it okay so it is compiling fine let's submit that okay it is passing all the test cases so i hope you have understood the problem again go through the problem if you found it difficult at any point and uh, keep coding thank you